Hello everybody, my name is Ace Face. Today we're going to be testing out a Gamma Fit for T1 Dark Abyss. This is a solo style gameplay for the Abyss solo style. And we're going to be using a Gamma. Unfortunately, this fit is not so cheap. And the reason is that is that not the fit itself being expensive, but the ship, the Gamma, in general, all faction ships have gone up to quite a big degree in price. So this hull itself costs at this time of the filming of this video 90 million isk. Total fit costs 130 million isk, so it still is a bit of isk on the fitting, but uh, mainly in the ship fitting right here, it used to be a lot cheaper back in the day, unfortunately. But the whole way I was inspired to do this was actually, back in the day, I used to do T1 exotics in a worm. It was how I earned isk when uh, my gila was, was destroyed at one point, actually. I was using my gila to farm abyss, and I lost it, and I thought, hmm, how am I going to get some isk? Okay. And I thought, okay, I could use a worm, because a worm was cheaper than a gila. I was able to do T1 sites, and at the time, I was doing T3 sites in my uh, uh, gila. So um, it was not a whole lot less isk. It was a bit less isk, but it was a nice like, way to build myself up to get that gila again. Uh, and then one thing I tested as well was using a gamma. And using a gamma in the abyss was uh, something I did for a bit. Uh, but I preferred the worm though because it had more DPS. But I used the gamma and I used it to farm some T1s, some basic T1s. I I, I tried it in T2s and it did go good sometimes, but most of the time it just fails. So T1s are really the best way to go. So this is a fit that's slightly different to the one that I used before. Before I didn't really have much acquaintance with the micro auxiliary power core. But this is actually quite a good module because this enables us to fit a medium shield extender like this with power grid to spare. It's a really powerful module and frigate's giving us a lot of power grid so it's really nice. So we're able to get actually a pretty decent tank right here, 8.7k EHP. And the reason we've got this uh, small compact sensor boost is because if we look on the range here of these missiles, 47 kilometer range. Without the sensor booster, we have 35 kilometer lock range. There's going to be a lot of waste range right there. But otherwise, you could perhaps remove this and put like a small shield extender or something here, just to make up for the like lost, uh, the lost mid slot right there. Otherwise, we've got some extender rigs and some EM shield enforcer because it had like 0% EM resist. I think this should handle the T1s all right. Uh, we'll test it out. And then after that, I would want to probably test out T2s. If it goes all well in the T1s. But it should be alright, because the dark sites are going to be really easy for the Gamma, since everything's going to have their their range reduced. And we're going to be doing full range of damage with our missiles. And then plus, we're going to be going so fast that like, we'll hardly be taking any damage. So, we'll move here. Go super speedy style. Unfortunately, the DPS is not so high, actually. Our DPS is quite low. I mean, it'd probably be better, to be honest, to go with something like rockets, because then at least we'll have some decent DPS. Or we should orbit, orbit this at least at something. Have some speed. There we go, good. So like something like this, maybe? If we were to put rockets. A rocket launcher. And then we'll also have more power, so we might be able to have more tank as well. Okay, I'll maybe remove this and put a medium shield like there, maybe. Two mediums, ooh. That could be something. 10k. We could put a canyon over here. The canyon shield extender is quite good because it saves a bit of power grid. But it still doesn't seem to be enough to have dual medium shield extenders, unfortunately. We just orbit here. Super fast. And attack curb this Tyrannos. It's taken quite a long time to take this guy out right here. The DPS is really not high, actually. Even though we've got the Fury, 179 DPS is not something that's particularly good. Oh, now we're even out of block range. <laughs> Drifted out so far because our ship, for some reason, has a really low lock range. Just in general, with non-Tech 2 ships, their lock range is just so bad. Even in faction ships, you'll notice the same thing as well. Like, for example, a Worm doesn't have particularly good lock range. They're not as advanced as the Tech 2 counterparts. But, on the other hand, we've got crazy good speed. 5k a second. <laughs> Let's jump in here. Uh, kick you more. But it should be easy to, to avoid their damage. The range of their disintegrators being nerfed hard when they've got the dark sight over here. Yeah, they're barely able to shoot us at all here. See, now he's able to shoot us. Now they're really close and he's already dead by the time we start taking any damage. It's unfortunate that we've got that deviant automatic suppressor there because that's going to makes stuff a bit harder it's so cool with this ship how we're going so fast we're just able to cruise across the arena like it's nothing 
so quick. Water ships in general, they're so quick. I don't understand why, but they're just so quick. They're like made to be very aerodynamic. I know the Bargest, for example, the Mordus Legion uh, battleship can use it for missions. The fill I use goes like 1.3k a second, something like that. So it is really a really quick ship for being a battleship. 1.3k a second, oof. It's like the speed of some cruisers. These are speedy boys right here. I would love to use the Raiju. I think it looks much cooler than the Garmin just because of the like, the color but also the shape of this ship right here. I think it looks so cool. Mainly the shape. I like it a lot. I like the more, the compactness of it. I think it looks really great. This is such an overpowered ship as well so it would be really cool to be able to fly this in the abyss. It is uh, really like it's, this is this ship has got the same like power as sort of cruisers like you can have crazy tank on it and crazy DPS. Okay, basic rogue drones. It really seems to be all right here. The tank seems to be perfectly fine. We're just chilling around, hardly taking any damage. It's quite cool. Easy peasy. You know, probably you could use like a Kestrel or something like a, a Kestrel could be used for T1s because you'd have very, uh, a very good ability to just dodge everything. So even if your tank is maybe not the best, it'll be still be pretty good, I think. Castro probably might be actually a, a good alternative for T1s, to be honest. Can maybe try it someday. You know, like a low skill version. Because I used to use a Castro for gammas, because I was able to get good shield regen with it. But the thing is, now with new spawns, it's quite difficult in general with solo frigates, like especially the Tech 1 frigates T1 Abyss. Because they can always get you, they've got good application with the Cinnabar waves and that kind of stuff. But I think it should be alright actually. If uh, the if I got Kestrel with good EM resists and everything else is alright, it shouldn't be too bad. Kaldara Navy Hook Bill could be something as well, Kaldara Navy Hook Bill. This ship right here is pretty cool. Okay, so this uh, fit seems to handle the T1 perfectly fine. Obviously, there are other spawns we could potentially meet, but the general feeling I get from this is that it'll handle the T1s pretty fine. So we'll check out T2 over here, see how that goes. Let's go. T2 Dark. I think the biggest problems are going to be the Cinnabar waves. These kind of waves, like the one we've got right here, shouldn't be an issue. We'll just be avoiding so much damage so easily. We've also got two ammunition types as well, EM as well, and they can be good for um, road drone battleship waves because the shield has really low EM resistance. So we just keep range like this and it should be all right. I'm just orbit here, maybe 30 kilometers to be honest, 30 kilometers or maybe maybe about 20 will be a bit uh, more, give us a bit more likelihood of landing our missiles properly. Yeah, really simple. This seems like they're just doing no damage. If they do hit it's just like hardly anything and we've got a decent amount of shield hp issue is just our dps is on the lower side so it takes quite a long time to take these guys out i was theory crafting a hook build for actually this could be a, an option for t1 it's got like pretty basic stuff the only thing is this one is a little bit bling but otherwise everything else is t2 it seems like could be an option for t1s these resists right here could be good for the cinema wave Really, it's just a case of AFKing right here and shooting. I wonder, because the thing is, Triglavians, they won't be able to catch us. They won't be able to hold us down or pin us down. So we'll be pretty safe from the Triglavians. They will, they're like anchoring down because they won't be able to catch us since we're so fast. Uh, Dremiels, I think they might be able to catch us. So we have to be a bit careful with those guys. That is my biggest worry. Again, the main thing seems to be DPS is the problem, not the tankiness. Probably with bling, you could add more DPS. Or remove some of this tank, bling it up more. It seems like we're not getting actually perfect application to this guy. Because sometimes we do damage like 840. Sometimes it's a bit less. I got like 600 volleys at some one point. Six, for 830 so we're not getting perfect application all the time actually and i'm a bit surprised i mean we're using light missile weaponry against a cruiser we should be getting full application all the time shouldn't we i guess the dark side makes it a bit more difficult since they're going to be going a bit a lot faster 
but that's interesting 927 okay now it's getting up the dps is going up jump to the next room see what we've got here took a bit of time there five minutes just our dps just lacking overall 250 300 would be best oh come on now I It's really just a waste of time with these guys right here. There's just another one this orbit like this. Just chill. I should be orbiting a bit further away. They're not five kilometers, probably fifteen. Okay, done with that. Let's see what we got here. If it's more sleeper cruise, oh my gosh, I'll be quite pissed off. <laughs> Pretty much just sleeper cruises, but this will be interesting though. Because the Lucid Sentinels can be quite deadly. Uh, they can apply actually quite decently, unlike the Ephialtus guys. So we'll try taking them out. See how it goes. You see they're doing a bit of damage. Oh yeah, look at that. They're doing quite a bit of damage. I think it'll be alright there, but we'll just, just see how, yeah, how it goes. Orbiting. They land some pretty big volleys here. Probably what we could do if we were taking a lot of damage, we could keep ranged like, even further. That should be alright then, I think. Oof, 430 damage. Maybe we can keep range 30 kilometers, perhaps. See if that improves anything. Just like a circle around, sort of a, a far range. This has me. These guys, they do have some decent application, but now they're missing completely. Okay, that's good. Only a tiny bit of damage from Ephialtis over there. There's a lot of neuters as well. I've got three neuters there. Two sentinels and a null charge over here. It's a pretty fat neuting spawn I've got. I see zero gigajoules of neuting right there because we're just so far away from them. The newts don't affect us. Oh, fully neuted out. We got in close now. We're fully neuted out straight away. Let's get a bit further away now. Yeah, one cycle of the MWD so we can just pull out the range of that neuter. It, all it took was just one close call and then I suddenly got instant neutered out because we got no cap battery, naturally really bad cap recharge. So just everything just depleted instantly right there. It's important to keep your range of the garment it seems like. I think the Cinnabar wave will shred this to pieces in T2. I think there's the risk of that because it does a lot of damage and even though we've got a decent buffer, our recharge per second is not the best. It's like, well, how much is it? 22 HP per second? I mean, 22 is okay, but still our, our resists are not particularly high for that 22 to me and anything. Okay, so now we've done with this Scylla over here. It's just smooth sailing. It's just an FE out this Lance over there. So yeah, 1.15k volley. That's how much we should have been doing all the time. Remember before we are doing like, what was that, 800 damage? And now we're doing 800 damage, so changes a bit depending on our application we could do there's more damage to be had on the table actually okay there we go that last Ephialtus died so at least it handled one t2 dark it was not the perfect spawns to represent the capabilities of the ship for doing t2s reliably but at least we could see that the sleeper cruises went well and also the neuters also went pretty well as well like the, the so we can see that if we do make a false move then the and units will play a big role, but as soon as we keep range, everything seems to be all right. So that's it for now, Gamma in the Abyss. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.